Okay, so right now we're in a pattern prediction software created specifically for the bladesmith and predicting um, twist rates and grinding depths in different patterns of steel. It's called Thor2.exe. It's an old program, but it still works great. And I put, uh, you know, JPEG or PN PNG images, simple vectors into it, and I can create them in uh, Inkscape is my preference. Um, simple black and white stuff for pattern prediction. This is a W's pattern I created um, in Inkscape, and then I exported a PNG and then brought it into Thor 2 here for some pattern prediction fun. Now this one is uh, just called W's 1. This is a basic 12 layer W's pattern. And uh, we can alter the twist rate. Check this out. This is not twisted very much. You can see that the W's aren't bent into very much of an arc here, and they're rather bold and coarse, and there's not very many of them per inch. Let's go to the other extreme, and you can see that if you really twist the bar, then they get um, very sharp, spiky, and bent, and there are many, many of them next to each other down the bar. Let's come to kind of a compromise. Yeah, right about there. They look pretty bent into a curve there, so pretty explody and nice. However, there's, a, there's always this kind of like pattern noise in the middle. Let's uh, grind into it less. And you can see that uh, out here it really doesn't look very explody and nice anymore. Let's grind in a little bit farther, that'll make it look better. And now you can see some explosions, but they're very noisy. There's there's confusion in here by some elements that we don't necessarily want down the center and between the explosions. So let's see how we can modify our W's to look a little bit more crisp and uh, have better contrast. So one thing that I tried was a horizontal gap. On the last restack, we put a black layer in the middle to see if we could separate our W's explosions that way. Well, you can see we got some separation here, but that isn't necessarily what we wanted. You have the arc of an explosion broken in the middle because we put the black in the wrong spot. So I made another file. This file is called W's vertical gap. Now let's grind in a little farther until we get to the, the black core. Refresh it. Let's grind in even a little farther. Refresh it. Boom. Sweet explosions separated by blackness. Black as the void itself. And so that is how I'm going to restack my bar uh, before I rip it in half. So I just get nice, crisp, finite explosions separated by black all the way down my edge. That is the plan. Just trying to up my explosion bar game here. All right, guys. Here I have a nice big fat billet. This is going to be a W's billet. You can see uh, I've got 1080, 15, 10, 20, 1080, 15, and 20, just building up the layers thicker. But in the middle, I've got a triple thick layer of 1080. So it was going to be a 13 layer billet, which it still is, but it's 13 layers with that middle layer being extra chonky. So this is in keeping with the um, twist pattern design from Thor 2 pattern prediction software uh, to try to get a poppier, more isolated explosion twisted edge bar. So now it's got to weld it up. And welding the billet up, as usual, is a pretty heavy billet, so it definitely needs some good corners on it. Lots of thin stock in it, so definitely got to do the side stripes here. And uh, I went with the heavier handle on this, that three-quarter inch square stock. stock uh, I used it throughout a lot of this project. This was a heavy billet. Wouldn't have been any good on number five rebar.
you'll see I speeded up a lot of my work in this video because I had a lot to get through in the 20 odd minutes I managed to pare it down to. So we oiled it off camera. It's going into the forge. Heating it up. And uh, hammer time. So the first two hammer clips in this video are the last two clips I believe you'll see that have much of any hammer bounce in them at all. We're welding this up here. You can see it's nice and bright. And uh, it's just a big stack of thin layers, so we're, we're pretty much going for it on this first one. Not really babying any welds. Smashing it down, drawing it out. And then because this is W's, we will be um, reorienting it at some point soon. I also figured out this is just not the best angle to film the hammer from. It just bounces. I mean, it's, it's right in between the two hammers and close to them too, so pretty hard to eliminate shock in this spot. As you can see. Now we're going right into our 45 degree re-square, partial re-square. We're buckling C's to start making our W's here. So I'm re-squaring it to octagonal at least at a 45 degree angle so that I really get some good corner wrap on my C's. And now I've flipped it the rest of the way to 90 degrees crushed down that C and now I'm just getting a long thin even bar for my restack next time around got the grinder in full auto mode I can walk away do other stuff just keep an ear on the grinder, come back, check it every now and then. Set it for another, set the down travel for another cut. Walk away, do stuff. You can see I got four pieces on the chuck side by side here. Grinding one face of two of them and two faces of the other two. This is what I'm usually doing on a restack, is just having a bunch of pieces together on the mag chuck. Now we've got a quadruple stack, and we are zapping these up, again with the fast weldy weldy. Add a choice between eliminating a lot of the work outright from the video, or just speeding a lot of it up. And I'd rather show it and speed it up than eliminate it entirely, because I do want the videos to convey a sense of just how much work is involved in all of this. But uh, unless I speed it all up, it just is like 45 minutes in one video of just making W's for one part of the pattern. Now please do note here that the camera is not bouncing around. I'm now mounted on a gimbal. And also I have foam pads under the feet of my tripod. And I cut the pads to to press fit onto the tripod legs so I can move it all around without too much fiddling. I found this to be pretty acceptable for hammer cam work. The short heats at first on these restacks. Nice soak before the second turn on the hammer. We start blasting away at it. I went ahead and sped up a lot of the hammer work in this too because I mean, you guys have already seen me weld and draw a bunch of basic stacks in this video. You don't need to watch me do it in real time. Believe me, on the next installment, there's a lot of hammer time, too. And uh, if I hadn't sped that up, you guys would just walk away from these in disgust. <clears throat> it's one thing to be in the shop doing this stuff. It's another thing to call it entertainment and just sit and watch it ad infinitum. I 
thing I learned to watch for here is gimbal drift. It's been a bit of a learning curve on getting the gimbal to film in a stable fashion, but I think I got a better handle on it now. Now, if you have noticed, I did chop that bar into three pieces and grind it off camera simply because it's the exact same thing that I did for the four stack that you just watched. Just imagine it with one less piece. And here we are welding it up again, same handle. Good old 300 amp Airco MIG welder. Burning that handle in good so it never falls off. And again, we're at three layers for our final restack here for a total of 12 layers of C's. Let's take a quick walk. We're getting ready for work today. About to turn the forge on. There's a billet right there. Uh, I've been working on this power hammer, tinkering with it. So we're gonna use that on the next heat. Um, let's go around outside and you can see the small compressor is still running because it's, it's cutout pressure is adjusted a little higher than the big compressor. The big compressor just cut out. right now. So I got a total of about 720 gallons, 740 gallons of air stored up. Uh, and I'm going to be using the big Baudry here for welding. Again, this is the final three layers stack of W's for a total of 12 layers. And then uh, after we get it welded on that, we're going to continue drawing it out on this hammer into kind of longer square stock. And then after we get it drawn out longish and squarish, we might roll it a couple times in the roller, cut it into a couple pieces and uh, twist on the twisting machine for our twisted W's for our edge bars. And that's going to take up quite a bit of the um, day. I would imagine so let's go ahead and fire up the forge looking up there in the ceiling at the Baudry drive yeah let's get it Pretty short first heat there. Must have just been feeling like it was time to heat it back up. Sometimes you gotta go with your intuition on these stacks. A little soak, a little grain growth, and you're ready to really get after it and draw it out without worrying about those thick, um, chunks separating from each other when you start hitting them from the side. Got a nice clean stretched out bar, ready for further drawing out on the Niles Bement 
utility hammer, which has a little bit of a crown to the dies. A little bit more of a drawing machine. And this is just glorious for me to run because I have been spending so much time getting it to this point. I didn't even speed this clip up. I figured y'all could just deal with watching the whole thing because I've personally watched it a bunch of times myself just watching that hammer run, listening to it. It's got quite a different sound than the mechanical bowdry. This one's got kind of a ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching. You can hear the air valves actuating. If you look up on the left of the hammer, you can see that W joint linkage actuating the oiler, the reciprocating mechanism of the oiler, driving little drops of oil up to the oil ports on the valves of the hammer. And this is a good long heat for this hammer. It's like a minute and a half and it remained powerful throughout. That's what I really needed it to do and it's getting more controllable. You can see that the lower die and anvil and everything is, is pretty solid and steady now. Finally took the time and made it a, a sow block key. Now I have a one inch kiss block that I'm forging the bar to just to clean it up exactly to one inch square because it's going in the twister next and the headstock of the twister is set up with some one inch dies I made as a twisting collet so I know if I forge it to the kiss block I'm not going to have to fool around with it to get, to get it to fit in my twister here I'm knocking a little bit of the corners off just to reduce stress on the billet but I don't round it off because I still want to see where my twist rate is at light speed now planishing getting scale off chewing everything up so this was a really long bar this whole thing won't fit in my twister so I off camera cut that bar in half and here I am with the handle end of the bar finish forging that to um, one inch square. I couldn't quite get all the way up to the handle with what I could get hot in the forge in one heat. After cutting I can do it. So that one is going to be ready for the twister now and then off camera I'm going to also cut the handle off on the abrasive chop saw. Here we are going into the twister. It's a modified um, <clears throat> bolt threading machine actually. An old Oster bolt threader 1940s model have it hooked up to a foot switch running at about 50 hertz here about 50 rpm I think and you can see the whole carriage of the twisting machine sliding slowly towards the headstock as the bar shortens due to the twist twist it up pretty tight not super tight but pretty tight because I'm going to be drawing it out after this and I'll lose some of that excessive twist rate Right here I'm at a welding heat coming out with tongs and um, I'm not going to a heavy square yet. I'm going to octagon first and then I'll tumble it round a little bit. I'm forging all of the corners in. If you don't forge all of the corners in at a welding heat, sometimes when you go to square the bar up and then draw it out into a rectangle or whatever you're going to do, then your corners will pooch out and you'll actually open the welds there more than was necessary. After getting all the corners knocked in, we will actually start forging it into a heavy square cross section and then drawing it out to a rectangular cross section heavy rectangle, about a, a skinny 5 eighths thick by a wide inch, and then try to get it as even as and clean as possible with sharp corners, because uh, at the end of this forging sequence we're going to anneal this bar well, and then in the next video we're going to be ripping, surface grinding and ripping this. 
Well, thanks for watching all of this with me so far. I know it's been a long journey and there's a lot more to come, but we'll be out of the forging and into the design process and into some outright blade forging and integral welding and all kinds of interesting things coming up, so stay tuned.